Good, beautiful, sunny morning to you guys. Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. I hope you guys are doing well. I'll be uploading this video with some Nomad internet. There's a link below if you need some mobile unlimited internet. Today, I think today is gonna be a sad day though. We're gonna, we're gonna dig into the shed here and bring out old Roxy the Rebel. I just, I have a hard time just storing a motorcycle. I emptied all the gas out and took the battery out, put her in there and um, I just don't see the point. I think I'm gonna give her a second life. Kind of sad, but it is it is motorcycle prime time, so I can definitely get all my money back and probably more. That's what we're gonna do today. Let's see how Roxy's doing. on the trickle charger so I'll grab that from the house and I'll get some gas. She's a dirty girl though. Alright, battery is installed and connected. Let me get some gas. I emptied all of the gas out, what, four or five months ago? And emptied it out of the carb so there was no gas anywhere in this bike. Just gonna put enough in there to see if she even runs. All right, moment of truth. It's been a while, guys. <laughs> See, this is a cold start. I have not started this bike up for about five months. So, let's turn her on, make sure there's power. Got power, let's choke it. Turn it on. Oh my gosh. Fired up the first try. warm up a little bit. Wow. You know, that was a pretty magical moment that it just fired up like that so easily. I was not expecting that. Okay. She's warm now. I want to I want to give her a bath before I take pictures and post her on uh, Marketplace and Craigslist probably, but maybe we should go for a ride. One last ride. Yeah. Yeah, let me go dig out my helmet and motorcycle glasses and take her for a quick ride. Oh wow, there's no mold in my helmet. Well, that's awesome. That's shocking. Got my a tank bag that has my wallet, keys, registration, all that good stuff. All right, go for a little ride here. just a stupid kind of fun. Man, she's running good and looking good. All right, let's go back to base camp. I want to wash her. That was fun. See, here's the, <laughs> that was so much fun. I love this bike. I, this bike is perfect for me and I get so much joy out of it. Like, I can't do it. I literally, I can't sell it. 
I can't. Not only can I not sell this bike, but... Can I bring the car and the bike? I'm dead serious, guys. Man, it's totally different tool than the car. And, man, I didn't realize how much I love this bike. Let me, I'm gonna do a little bit of research. Let me, let me get back to here in a little bit. <laughs> also give the exhaust some time to cool and then I'll, I'll wash the bike too. But not to take pictures and sell it. She looks good. I feel like at this point, if I can't find a way to transport both the motorcycle and the car, I'm still not gonna sell this motorcycle. I'm just gonna store it again. But gosh, it is amazing how much fun this little bike is. And it's perfect for RV life. Oh, I gotta go call. My tab's expired in January. Let me go. Let me go online to texas.gov and find out how I can get the bike re-registered remotely since I'm not in Texas. Yeah, let me go find out first. Guess what? Roxy the Rebel is now registered. So that's the first time I've done the online system. I know I talked about it when I was trying to register the RV and tater tot when I was in Texas about not the information. It's super easy. You just go to texas.gov and then you enter in your license plate number and the last four digits of your VIN number of the vehicle and it says it expired. There's no extra fee. If you're late, you can be up to nine months late. There's no extra fee. It was 51 bucks to do it. And then there's a page where it says, is your vehicle out of state? Yes, you have to certify under penalty of perjury that, that the vehicle is currently out of state and that's why it can't get inspected. And then you have to type in the GEICO policy number and the expiration date on my insurance. They forward that. Within two days, they're gonna mail out my new tabs and we're good, we're registered. It just says that I have to get the motorcycle inspected within 72 hours of re-entering Texas. I don't know when that's gonna be, but this is so cool. I mean, I don't have the tabs yet, but I do have the thing online that says the bike is registered. So I've got all the paperwork I need to legally ride the motorcycle. It's just, this changes everything because now I don't have to be in Texas every year in January or February. I don't have to. I can be in Texas whenever I want, which I think I'm gonna do because it always seems to pour in rain. And I love Texas. I wanna spend more time in Texas, but I don't want it to be cold and rainy all the time. So I will update you here in about a week or two when I physically get those because they're sending them to my Livingston address and then I have to have that rerouted through escapees back here to base camp or modified auto, so. The bike is registered and I'm gonna do, let me get back to here in about an hour, okay? All right, bike rack off the back of the RV. My e-bike is still in the shop, by the way. It's going to be weeks until I can get my e-bike back um, on the back of the RV. <laughs> I got my uh, motorcycle carrier on the back. In fact, let's, let's take a little peek here. So I have turned my dual receiver upside down. So the motorcycle is, is at the normal level, this one. The car one that goes down is now lower. So this was flipped the other way so that the bike carrier was on top. And now the car carrier underneath, the blue ox goes underneath, which can easily still be level. And this is, this is my concern. So let me put that down there. My concern is that when it's hooked to the car, the front fender of the car might clip this or this. And I've done all my measurements and it says it won't. But still, I won't know until I physically try to make a hard right or left turn with the car and motorcycle attached. But with my measurements, the front of the car underneath clears and it will not hit either of these. Also on the back here, um, I broke that other anti-wobbler, but so there's the normal one. Here's the one I flipped upside down to test it. And as you can see, without the bolts on the bottom, might it be okay if I do drag? because I won't gnarl up these bolts if they're like this. So I ordered another anti-wobbler for the bottom blue ox part in case I do bottom out. I don't think I'm going to though. I think we're gonna be okay. Um, last step, 
last step is to hook everything up with the motorcycle on there. And I, and I also want to say, people say, oh, you're putting too much weight on there. Well, no, no, I'm, I'm not because this RV has traveled with Roxy the Rebel for over a year with no brake problems at all. In fact, this RV has a beefier rear suspension. You can hold more weight back there. And I don't have drum brakes anymore like I did in Yoda. I got rear disc brakes on those dualies, disc brakes, and I never had a problem. So I'm going to put the 296 pounds back directly on the hitch which it can hold up to 500 pounds directly on the hitch so plus the carrier is about 100 pounds and then the car itself you know it's one of the lightest cars out there and it's not direct weight we are just pulling the weight it's not direct weight on the hitch very little weight on the hitch just basically just the blue ox system so it's literally just starting to rain as i stepped outside there is currently a zero percent chance of rain today so there's that. Um, <laughs> anyway, is, is this a sign? Well, I'll, what I was going to do is put the motorcycle on the carrier here, secure it with all my stuff, and then see how much clearance there is, but really? Is it a miracle? There's 0% chance. It's not even a 1% chance. Maybe it'll just go away. Hang on. Okay, let's try this again. There. <laughs> this didn't go as smoothly as it used to for me, and that is because we're farther away from the base of the RV right now. So I used to be able to kind of get the, R the motorcycle on here and just kind of lean it against the side of the RV. Since I didn't have that option, it's definitely a trickier now. I think what I'm gonna end up doing is carrying around a, little, a, a two by four and I'm gonna measure it from the distance of here to like here to a spot that allows me to kind of tip the motorcycle a little bit. That way, once I hook this one side and it tips this way, then I'll be able to attach this other one a little easier. Um, Cause that was a little trickier to get on. <laughs> then I'll put my last strap on the back. The ramp goes back in there. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hook it up and just drive a little ways over to Sean's shop and just kind of test it out and see how it works. But I gotta get the RV pulled out to connect the car. Can't do it back here. Otherwise the car might get stuck this grass is always soaky and swampy. I ended up never leaving base camp today because once it started raining at 2 p.m. magically with zero percent chance of rain, it never stopped raining. In fact, we are flooding again here at base camp with still a zero percent chance of rain. And I'm, I'm sitting here trying to figure it out. I haven't made any trips from the RV. I'm, I don't even know why I'm standing out here in the rain actually, but you know, Illinois is weird and I've had a lot of viewers lately ask, Eric, why did you buy a base camp in a flood zone near a river? What? I never said anything of the sort. I am nowhere near a river and I'm not in a flood zone. It just rains a lot. Like I keep saying, twice the amount of Seattle, Washington, and even when it's not supposed to rain, it still rains and floods. It's just exhausting, man. I ain't gonna, it's just, it's very weird. God, and it's windy. It's incredible. So anyways, I didn't get too far today. Walk through Lake Nomadic Fanatic. Got the motorcycle secure up for tomorrow. <laughs> oh, I hate it. I, I hate Illinois. God, what is the point, Eric? I don't know. Make your plans, Eric. <laughs> Make those plans. We'll try again tomorrow. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Seems like I'm always at the mercy of the ridiculous weather here in Illinois. So that's why I make these plans, but you gotta be a little flexible. Uh, it has stopped raining. The ground's still a little moist over here. But there is no lake here, so 
my trench is working for now and I do have plans in the future to build a, a French drain through my backyard that goes to the front yard. We're, we're going to do a French drain here eventually. Just not right now, not, not right this second. But I wanted to give you a heads up on something. You guys know I like my, my dish outdoors. I got my antenna on top of the roof and all that. Dish outdoors is great for traveling on the road. I love my Netflix and Amazon Prime and YouTube and stuff like that. But in order to access that, you have to have internet. And I go to a lot of places that don't have internet. And with the satellite system for, for live TV, I just have, a, have to have a shot of the southern sky which is, can be found anywhere in the country, usually. Dish Outdoors has treated me really well on the road. I'm 100% happy with my service. I wanted to let you guys know that if you visit dishoutdoors.com slash nomadic, they're doing a $50 off your bundle, which will include all the stuff you need to get set up. There's no commitment. You can go month to month. You can update your local channels from your phone. It's super easy, and it's been working really well for me. Also, starting today, April 19th, they're doing a, a drawing, a little giveaway, where you can get the dish antenna, the uh, Playmaker antenna, you can get a Wi-Fi adapter, which will allow you to access stuff like Netflix and Amazon Prime right from the actual dish uh, menu system there. It's been working really well for me. Also, starting today, April 19th, they're doing a, a drawing, a little giveaway where you can get the dish antenna, the uh, Playmaker antenna, you can get a Wi-Fi adapter, which will allow you to access stuff like Netflix and Amazon Prime right from the actual dish uh, menu system there. You get the DVR hard drive, so you can record those shows and then skip the commercials later. And of course you get the Wally with the remote. Go to that link in the video description below, dishoutdoors.com slash nomadic. Enter that drawing at least and check some of their prices and some of their bundles on there. They have packages of up to 240 channels, which is the one I have, and service as low as I think 45 46 bucks a month so so really reasonable so i'll put the link below check it out enter the drawing mine as well right and uh, i'll get to work here hooking up the car and jackson i'll see you in two days jackson has a birthday coming up on the 21st all right bye guys